YouTubers. Where's the camera? It's there. Right. The final version of this three-in-one primary, secondary, and bottling bucket design. I think I've found the end cure. I thought I cracked it last time, and I announced quite bravely. I have cracked it, guys. And I'm not entirely convinced I had cracked it. Well, I was convinced, but then uh, looking at the results, less convinced. So, uh, bucket within a bucket, basically stackable, with a bit of air, uh, air space for the spigots, um, and then a lucky band, which I added as my, I guess, Mark II version of the system. So, uh, let's see how that got on. I put it on a stout the other day. Bear in mind, okay, guys, I'm not sure where to look. I'm going to look at the screen, which isn't at you, so I apologise. I'm going to look at the screen. Um... It was 1080 was its starting gravity, or it was supposed to be, but I overshot by about 6 litres because I did it by eye, and my eyes are a bit dodgy. Um, so I ended up with 29 to 30 litres of stout, which ended up with a starting gravity of 0, uh, 1068. So um, quite a lot under because I'd put so much more water in. Um, I pitched two packets of yeast, um, a US05, excuse the tumble dryer, um, and also SA04. So two of those, uh, one sachet of each, went in. So we've got loads of sludge already in the fact of that. I did a starter as well, gave it a good couple of hours with a bit of um, spray malt. It was foaming by the, by the time I got to, it, to pitch it. So it's been fermenting for four days. It reached its uh, final gravity. I was expecting it to top out or end out about 1019, 1018. It's at 1018, so happy with that. 6.5% maybe. Um, so yeah, it tastes alright already, it's pretty pretty good, but it had a lot to contend with the, the first device. It was basically, or the second, my second iteration of the device. So we've got two packs of yeast, it's a lot of sludge. We've got, all sitting at the, would it be at the bottom of the fermenting bucket, obviously that's been raised up with a false bottom. Um, and we've got 120 uh, grams of hops that went into it as well. Um, I didn't use Irish moss because it ran out and the home brew shop didn't have any. So, I didn't do any of that Irish moss stuff you'd normally do. Um, and it's got a massive grain, but 1080. Um, eight, eight kilograms, I think it was. So, you know, it's a lot to contend with. Now, normal in a bucket you'd expect to see, I reckon a good inch, maybe a bit less, of sludge. Let's see what kind of uh, sludge we've got after five days. Send him in here for five days. can't really see what you can see, so let me just uh, I'll hold this still because it gets very wobbly. Right, you can see here we've got the bucket inside the bucket. That kind of white layer here is where the lackey band is holding back the air still. So you can kind of push that and release the bubbles. Um, but it's finished doing its thing. The spigot is as low down as you can get, really. And you can see that there's about a centimetre. It gets less as it goes back around the back, actually. This kind of bucket, the way the, the it puts pressure on the uh, this uh, shelf, means that you get a bit less. So at worst, it's kind of a centimetre, I'd say. Which isn't bad. Isn't bad. The bulk of it is going to be inside this inner bucket here. When I pull that out, I'm expecting to see sludge fest. So I reckon... 80% is in that inner bucket now, 20% uh, remains in here, means I'll pull out the, f the first one in, a cut in about two weeks. I've got some vanilla extract I've been making, so that's going to go in. I've got some vanilla pods in some Kirsch at the moment, just um, doing its thang, I'll show you that. don't know why you care, but there we go. So that'll go in, and then... Uh, a bottle from the straight from there. I would obviously like to do it twice. So the Mark III, the final version. I think we should have a I don't know drum roll or some kind of music. Um, let's do that. I don't have any music. I'll make up some music. Right, ready? Dun, 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 dun. It's this thing. Okay. So we've got the spigot as low down as we could. Okay. Now I looked at designs for this. I'd looked at trying to epoxy resin in the back nut on the front. So instead of having the back nut in the back, putting it on the front and trying to get rid of the, the tube that went inside to really free up the inside of the base. And it didn't hold. It was problematic. Uh, even with epoxy glue, super glue, I tried it. 
I didn't fully let it set, so. Um, but that's it, and generally, I do want to be able to take this out and change the, the spigot if I want as well. Um, but the idea was that you basically glue the back nut to the front of the drilly hole as low down as you can in the bucket. And then, obviously, put your nut around it and glue that on with epoxy. And then you can just screw in your taps and unscrew them at you, as you wish without it impinging into the into the bottle, into the bucket. Um, too tricky, okay? If I had an injection moulding kit and knew what I was doing, I might just make a make that, but I don't. So inside here, this is my solution. I've got two layers now. Imagine your primary is it's your primary's in here, and it's doing what that's doing. It's just finished. Let's have a look inside to see what you'd look at normally. It's very dark in there. Now this is a flexi tub, a 26 litre flexi tub, um, which I got from the range. Um, you can get them from home base as well, the same ones. Um, box standard Strata, I think, make it, and the bucket itself is made by something called Jockey. It's a 300p, the bucket, a Jet 300p, if you want to know. Um, you can't get it from the range, you just look out for it anywhere, really. And this is a, a Strata 26 litre flexi tub. It's got handles, right, and it sits below the line of the lid. So it's real neat, real neat device. That's your primary. Imagine your primary's just gone on in there, and you've got your false bottom in there. So step one. Obviously, you want to do your secondary, you pull out, you're in a bucket. Okay, slowly, 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 slowly. You might need a little bit of help with an extra person, possibly, just to keep. They stick a little bit, these, because they're um, a softer rubber. This is LDPE, which is low density polyethanol. Low density polyethanol is food safe, which is a good start, and it's also got a high resistance to alcohol. So, no problems with getting cancer from. Uh, using this flexi tub, and inside is another flexi tub. Okay, this time I've got the handles off because you can't have two with the handles. It would be nice because it looks really neat. It's a lovely little thing. But you'll notice with this one, if you look down there, I've left, I've cut out basically a section to cope with the spigot. I'll pull this out. So, yeah, you've done your secondary, you want to go to but bottling, don't bother with the final transfer to a bottling bucket, you can just, in fact, at this time, it's probably worth gently putting your sugar in, and then pulling this up, and allowing it all to mix it all together, and whatever sediment is remaining in this will be in the bottom here. Now, obviously, I've compromised the design somewhat, because I've had to get this section cut out to fit around the spigot. So, it's not perfect, but then again, that is quite a lot of surface area here that should collect the seconds. It's not like it's going to be huge quantities of sediment. And provided you pull it out, kind of squeeze the, if you squeeze it in like this way, as you pull it out, it allows you to tip it back a bit. And then you can really just pull it out and uh, you should be fine. If you wanted to rest it at an angle, of course, to encourage more down towards this bottom end, you would do that as well. This is a compromise, so be it, okay? This is still not going to keep 100% of the sediment out, okay? So we were at probably 80% success last time. This will get you to about 95%, I think, 90%, something like that. Um, even the flexi tubs leave a bit of a gap at the bottom here, which is fine. You do need to allow it to get in underneath, or otherwise you, you end up with a suction cup effect, um, in case you can't pull it out. So um, you do, you can't have air trapped under it, and it's good to, to have a bit exposed. What's going to happen is because of the way that the bottoms of these bend a little bit, they're not square, um, you will find a little bit of yeast settles inside the ingress here, just a little bit. Um, that goes in, obviously, to support this kind of structural piece around the outside. Um, so it should just sit nicely when you pull it out, kind of around here, and it'd be very, very little, very little. And it allows you to obviously just bottle straight from there, and none of that really should have much in the way of sediment. So, not perfect, but I reckon 95% perfect for what is essentially um, a couple of flexi tubs. They're three quid each. You know, they cut with scissors, kitchen scissors. 
quite simple. It took me like 10 minutes. Uh, and that's that really. We're not, not talking crazy money. So you're talking a tenner for the bucket. One thing you're going to need with the spigot, just to show you something here, is that this spigot doesn't go out the full length. And the reason being, you can either cut it down to size, but all I've done is I've put a back nut at the back and I've added a little back nut ahead of the spigot here. See that? That, that, that little extra bit here shouldn't be here. That should normally be as a back nut at the back. But I've used two back nuts. Um, just, to, just to pump it out and away from the thing a little bit. So, yeah, you might need one extra back nut and a couple of cheap flexi tubs, a pair of scissors, a hole saw, put your hole in, Bob's your uncle. There we go. I'm going to give it a go next time I get to have a brew. And, of course, I'll report and see, uh, let you know how I get on. All right, take care.